All right, folks, staying with the border issues, I spoke earlier today with Florida Senator Marco Rubio about that issue and a lot more. Please take a listen. All right, we welcome back to the show Florida Senator Marco Rubio. Uh, Senator, we appreciate your time. Thanks for coming back on, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. All right. Uh, you know, you have a piece up on uh, Fox Digital a couple days ago. Biden's open border lets ISIS walk right into the U.S. And uh, I agree with you. I think this is a pretty major problem. The question is, what should we be doing about it? Well, we have to stop the continued flow. I have no hope of that at this point because the Biden administration is continuing to allow people to enter the country and has been releasing them. You know, what they rely on is they say, well, we vet everyone that's at the border. Well, they can't. Because if you some of these parts of the world that people come from, we don't have any information about them. We have no databases from there. And uh, so we don't know if they're terrorists or are here to do terrorism. But if you just think about this, right, if it's nine, 10 million people of just a small percentage of them, and they've come from all over the world, just a small percentage of them have been sent here to conduct a terrorist attack. That, that's a lot of people and that's a lot of terrorism. So I, I take the warnings that, you know, if you read between the lines what the FBI director has been saying repeatedly now over the last couple months, this is perhaps, if not the most, one of the most dangerous moments domestically in, in over a decade or longer in the United States because it's just the sheer number of people that have come in from all over the world that we have no idea who they are. And because we know that ISIS has been in the business of trafficking people to the U.S., meaning charging them to do it. But common sense tells you if they have a business moving people, they would move their own terrorists using that same network. Yeah, we were talking on last night's show, sir. We were talking about this very subject. There's a lot of people coming in from the Middle East. There's also a lot of people coming in from China. They seem to be able-bodied males. In fact, yeah, a whole bunch of Chinese coming in, uh, actually clean-shaven, uh, dressed up with suitcases, walking across the border, uh, essentially unhindered. And nobody knows who they are or where they've gone. And that cannot be a good thing. Well, look, anytime, this is not immigration. This is mass migration. It's uncontrolled. It's chaotic. And that's not good under any circumstance. But much less when you know that there are groups all over the world, not just from the Middle East, from Central Asia, uh, that, that uh, have cells of ISIS terrorists and al-Qaeda terrorists who seek to conduct operations in the United States. So you just put it together. They want to attack America in America. It's easier than ever to get into America and stay. They don't have to worry about being vetted at the border because there's no records of them to check on. Common sense tells you these things all come together and the threat is upon us. I, I, I truly believe and I have reason to believe uh, and I think we all have reason to believe based on common sense that uh, in this country right now there are people that are here for the purposes of conducting a terrorist attack. How many? Who knows, but too many. So Senator Rubio, there's, you know, continued reports that the Joe Biden, after saying he had no executive authority, is now going to come up with some uh, executive order. Um, 4,000 people coming in is okay, but the 4,000 and first person is not okay, or something like that. Nobody really much believes in it. What's happening with that? Do you know anything else? Only in the media reports. But what he has to really do in order to fix this problem, he's in a vice. He has to reinstitute the Trump program, which is what he got rid of with his executive orders. He had over 90 executive orders on immigration, basically executive orders telling Border Patrol and DHS not to enforce the law or creating all kinds of exceptions in the law, whether it's parole, whether it's releasing people pending an asylum hearing, allowing people to come in, turn themselves in and go. You know, if you come to this country illegally, cross the border, turn yourselves in, you have an 88 percent chance of being released into the country. All of that is because of the executive orders that he put in place to repeal the Trump policies. And you think it's time to now, under a new administration, presumably, uh, it's time to look to deportation. We're going to have to yes. deport, at least we're going to have to deport the criminals. The numbers are so big here. Uh, you've changed your view from several years ago. I've changed my view, Senator. I think a lot of people have changed their view about that because the numbers have gotten to be so huge. 
well, we're, we're, I've changed because the issue has changed. The problem has changed. There's a big difference between saying there's 10 or 11 million people that have been here longer than a decade. Some were brought in as kids. You know, they've been here a long time. There's a difference between that and there's those 11 million plus another 15 to 20 more on top of them that have come in since, including 10 million in the last year by the time Joe Biden is done. Okay, in the last three years by the time Joe Biden is done. Uh, that's a big difference. And so what is it that drives illegal migration? It is perception. If they believe, if you believe that getting here is easy, Easier than it used to be and staying is easier than it used to be that you have a good chance to get here and a good chance to stay you're gonna come and that's what's driving people when Trump was in office they didn't think it would be easy, easy to get here and they didn't think it would be easy to stay the numbers went down now oh, got it Roger that um, one last one Senator we have some fun on this uh, your op-ed in the uh, Washington Post why I believe in industrial policy done right um, I'm probably one of the free market guys that you were um, uh, criticizing in this speech. So I love, I love the column. Let me ask you something. Suppose I said to you, I agree that our defense industrial base uh, has faltered. I agree with you. And suppose I said to you, I agree that our manufacturing base uh, has faltered and weakened. I mean, my great friend Bob Lighthizer agrees with that. I mean, I, I think you're absolutely right about that. Then the question is, though, how much government intervention do you really want, Senator Rubio? Well, I don't know if it's government intervention as much as it is government incentive. We want to incentivize the behavior of bringing things here. And you do that in two ways. One is you put tariffs on foreign imports on, in these key sectors. Look, I'd like to do it on everything, obviously, but that's not ideal economically. You have to do it on sectors that you've identified as critical to the national interest. And it's not just military gear. It's pharmaceuticals, the ability to make medicine. It's rare earth minerals that the Chinese manipulate all over the world. Our, our technology, we can't make it if we don't have access to those things and those rare earth minerals that China has cornered the market on and has grown their control of that market. So these are critical to our national interest. And those are the industries we need to identify and then incentivize. Now, you think in the case of rare earth minerals, the Chinese are subsidizing it. So basically it is being sold on the global market below the cost of mining it. Okay? There's no way to compete against that unless you yourself have to step in and do something to create a marketplace that people can go into because who, who can invest in something where you're going to lose money? Only the Chinese can because they're subsidizing that industry. So we have to be careful. This can't expand to every business in the world or every industry, but there are some that are critical to our country and there are some things like that we're going to have to do. But and that includes denying entry into a marketplace on these critical uh, for, for these critical goods and 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 uh, and, and commodities uh, from countries like China that are deliberately deliberately manipulating the market uh, as a strategic uh, imperative, not as an economic one. So I agree with that. I agree with most of that, as far as I understand it. Look. I think unfair trading practices is the catch-all, particularly regarding China, but not only China. The European Union has unfair trading practices also, as I'm sure you know, and we worry about China sneaking through Mexico to dodge the UMCA. But my thought here, Senator, is we don't have, I mean, the Biden spent a fortune, over a trillion dollars on the misnamed Inflation Reduction Act and all this crazy climate change that the public, by the way, uh, completely rejected. Checks. You see it in poll after poll. We can't spend a lot of money because we've got to get inflation down. So my thought to you, sir, is this. Why don't we be vigilant about unfair trading practices, use tariffs where necessary to negotiate, but meanwhile, cut tax rates and cut all the Biden regulations so we would provide incentives for our manufacturing here at home and take the red tape out of the equation. So it'd be a combination. Go after unfair trading practices, but let's have some free market incentives on lower tax rates and regulations no, at home. 100 percent. What do you that, think about that's 100 percent? That, no, that's 100 percent right. I mean, we want to create the incentives to do it here. We want to create a disincentive uh, to bring in things that are unfairly being being brought here because they're being subsidized or manipulated, especially from China uh, on all kinds of industries. And we do want to avoid. So in the Inflation Reduction Act and even even in the Chips Act, what they're doing is they're taking money and they're and they're basically they're not they're not funding the industrial capacity of the United States. They're funding favored industries that happen to be in the green energy field. And by the way, as a result of it, indirectly funding the Chinese companies, whether it's solar panels or electric cars or what have you. So that is just they call it inflation reduction, but it is it, it mm. doesn't do anything to reduce inflation. It takes government money.
money and spends it, and in the name of industrial policy, it spends it on pet projects that are part of their broader narrative on climate change and things of that nature. It is not geared towards the national interest. It is geared towards a base of their party. Well, That's Ro totally different from what I'm for. Well, Roger, that too. See, just in a few minutes here, we've created a whole economic policy white paper just during this <laughs> short interview. And <laughs> Senator, Senator Rubio, you're a great sport. Thank you for coming back on the show, Thanks sir. Thanks for having me.